Hello, good evening. Hopefully you're going to see me and hear me well. All right. So I'm in the hospital. And yeah, this is the last place I expected to be for the last four days. So hi, Sean. Can you tell me if you can hear me? That would be greatly appreciated because I have, um, I had to plug in my speakerphone because it's extremely loud in here because this air vent that's actually over by my bed is exceptionally noisy. Can you hear me? Just let me know in the comments if any, if any of you can hear me. I, um, I've been here since Saturday. I actually had to call 911 um, and it was scary and I don't wish this on anybody. Um, you know, I already have dental issues that I'm trying to deal with. But fortunately, the one blessing that is coming from all of this is that uh, the VA is going to cover this 100%. And uh, I, I was going under a lot of stress. I, 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 um, but I don't think the stress is entirely what caused it, although I haven't been getting as much rest as I need. What happened was, is on Friday night, um, I was really tired. I'd had a very long day. I was a little bit upset. Um, and I, I went to bed. I, I had wanted to eat something, but my stomach wasn't feeling right. So I didn't, I just decided to go to bed. Um, and I went to bed early, but I tossed and turned and I couldn't fall asleep because I felt I was getting an IBS flare up. And anybody else there out there that have, has ever had IBS, IBS is irritable bowel syndrome, and in my case, I get bloated and constipated. So I did take some magnesium with anticipation that that would settle my stomach, reduce the migraine that I was also getting, and get some sleep early. Because the following morning on Saturday, I was supposed to lead Sadhana at Yoga Village. And unfortunately, I did not sleep. All I did was toss and turn. I felt miserable. I was getting sharp shooting pains, which sometimes I get. And in the end, I, I had to, you know, send a text message saying I can, I'm not going to be able to lead sadhana. And I was actually looking forward to it, and I, as I normally am. And uh, I, I just kept getting up and not feeling well and going to the bathroom. And I had a couple bowel movements, and I thought that would help because typically when you get the constipated version of IBS, at a bowel movement relieves it all. It's almost like, oh, relief, release. And I'm going to tell you right now, it actually got, it got worse. The pain that was, I was feeling didn't move. And I knew that wasn't right. So what ended up happening is I, I, I just was like in surrender point where I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I know it's not normal. And I know my body well enough to be able to go, I need help. And I, I felt like I was going to be picking up the phone and calling 911, and that's where I was. I did call my neighbor because I was exceptionally um, worried. You know, I just wanted somebody to come in. Tom wasn't at the house at the time. And I called my neighbor across the street, probably about 8.30, and left. then I sent her a text message, and it turned out she was out of town. So, um, but she, did, she said exactly what I said. She said, call 911. Don't worry about anything. You're covered. Just just call 911 and I called 911 and you know that takes a lot you know I push through a lot I have a high tolerance for pain but this pain literally put me in hot sweats cold sweats and my fingers started to get tingly and I could feel that the pain was so excruciating I nearly passed out that's what the pain was doing to my body and your body does it goes into shock it shuts down it's it's how the body finds a way to heal and per just you just go out and I called 911 and they had an ambulance on the way and I, I was still in underwear no top I had no energy I was curled in fetal position with my pillow holding onto my pillow and I said please tell them I have no clothes on I sent a text to Tom um, and they arrived pr rather quickly and when they arrived there were five of them and I told them to come around the back door because the front door I had locked. Fortunately, it was open. And then 
there, poor Buddy. Buddy's my little protector. Buddy was barking and growling, and he's really become very protective of me over these past couple years. And I was more concerned because they kept saying, ma'am, can you come get your dog? I said, I can't move. I cannot move from this position because it was the only thing that was relieving and any type of movement and, and engagement of my abdominal muscles was just excruciating. So I was able to kind of, hey buddy, come over here, come over here. And he came over, he started licking my hands. And then all of a sudden Tom did show up. So he was able to keep him at bay. And it was crazy. Um, Tom was able to keep him and they came in. It was just, it was just, it was a scary experience. And there were five of the um, paramedics. They came in, they, they helped me get on the stretcher. They got me out into, and I mean, it was, it was a little difficult. They had to lift me. I had a sheet pulled over to me, so I ended up bringing a pillow and a sheet, so I wasn't completely exposed. They got me to the, the hospital. The hospital was fortunately about seven to 10 minutes up the street, and Tom followed on his bike. And it, it just was a scary experience because I didn't know what was going on. My biggest concern was something rupturing inside my body. And you, know, you don't know, you become toxic, you can die. You can die from that, don't take chances. That's probably the one thing I'm sharing, reason I'm sharing this especially, is to never take a chance on your person, your life, your body. Tune into it. If it is screaming at you in pain, that's a sign you need to take action. You need to listen to it. And I know my body pretty well. An IBS flare up, I can get through. But what I was experiencing was beyond that. And in the end, I'm grateful I called because I don't know what I would have done. And anybody who knows me knows I'm totally against pharmaceuticals, pain meds of any sort. And I, had, I was like, give me what you got. I can't handle this. It was that excruciating. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, I couldn't move. It hurt to move my legs. It hurt to stand up or to sit down. I needed help with everything I was doing. And it took him a while to figure out what it was because I didn't know if it was because of the liver detox I've been doing. I didn't know if it was because of the stress I was feeling. I didn't know if it was the lack of sleep or what. So I had first a CAT scan and I am allergic to contrast to top everything out. So they did a normal CAT scan. Then they, they gave me pre-medication for a second CAT scan, which apparently didn't make it to the lower int intestine, the big, the, any of the intestines ultimately. And as a result, they ended up having to do it a third time, which we did last night. I'm just so out of it. I had a um, GI specialist in here. She was looking initially at the gallbladder because the gallbladder was dilated at nine point or nine millimeters, which apparently is rather large. And there was a little bit of sludge, although I've never had any issues. All of my tests came back really normal. It did not turn out to be the gallbladder in the end though. So when they did the test with the dye, the contrast, the, the third time they were able to see this is a very unusual situation. I don't know that anybody else out there, that, how common this is. It was my appendix. And I wasn't keen, I wanted a second opinion, but here's what they were telling me. It was perforated, which meant it was built up with toxin, which means I caught it in time because if it had, if it had burst, that would have been a bigger mess to clean up. So that they were able to do laparoscopy as opposed to cutting me open, you know, wide open. And I'm still in pain, by the way. So I just wanted to share this so that people were informed of why I haven't been around. But also so that others out there don't neglect their bodies and recognize if you get to this point to listen. It's imperative. I don't care what it, whatever your fears are, your biggest fear should be something may, is wrong. And here's the thing, so the appendix is at the end of your large intestine. Mine was tucked up under it. So the reason I was getting such excruciating pain 
wasn't just the appendix itself, but it was folded up under, and that means it was even more obstructed, causing it to inflame and perforate. Because what happened when I drank the dye, the contrast, the contrast ex was leaking in to the rest of my body. So imagine if there's toxicity, toxic stuff would be leaking in. And I don't know how long this has been going on. I don't know exactly. I mean, I'm going to ask more questions. Because when you're on pain medications and anesthesia, you don't know. You lose your train of thought or you forget. And I'm pretty, pretty alert. But um, some of the questions just escaped me in the middle of me asking them too. <sighs> My shoulder's tweaking and really feels like it's sharp shooting pain in this left shoulder. So I am hooked up, by the way. They've got me on antibiotics. Got all my IVs in. They had to move the IV over. I've had IVs in both arms. This arm is currently swollen and inflamed. My legs are really inflamed right now. I, went, I finally was able to get up to the bathroom just a little bit ago, just before I did this video, to um, move. And my legs, you, you talk about edema. Because, see, initially, they were saying I had edema up by, first the doctor said edema up in my um, liver, gallbladder area. And then he said I had ascitis, which is a collection of fluid. And then all of a sudden that last CAT scan, see, this is why it's so important to keep asking questions, to keep sharing all your information. It didn't end up being all that as the problem. Those were just part of what was going on but the pain was localized to my right upper flank and lower and I'm just grateful that they found it because this is like life or death situation I mean I'm I'm still in shock that I now you know that I had my appendix taken out and I still am not unable to breathe fully because of this so but yeah, I've been in the hospital since Saturday morning and it is, it's, it's been an eye opener. And I really just wanted to share this with all of you because I think it's important that you don't wait, that your body is your temple and it has to take you through the rest of your life and you should take as best a care as you possibly can. I mean, maybe the dental stuff was associated with it. I don't know. I don't have the answers. but. The bottom line is, is to listen and don't make assumptions, don't even assume anything. And tr definitely, one thing I've learned, I mean, from the start, everybody had their opinion of what it could be. You know, uh, Tom was sharing with them about my, my liver detox smoothie, which, is, which by the way, was um, one whole grapefruit, one whole lemon, a, two, two cloves of garlic, not, not the bulb, the cloves, uh, about an inch of gar uh, ginger, two tablespoons of liver, I mean olive oil, and two tablespoons of flaxseed, and along with you could do a, a, like a handful of greens or something. And I was putting cilantro in, which is a great chelator. Now I did that for 16 days. I have not been eating or consuming oils. That's one thing I kind of cut out of my diet and I was feeling all right. I wasn't feeling bad. I was actually feeling decent. My nails were growing really nicely. My, I noticed my eyebrows and my eyelashes and little things I was noticing. I was like, okay, then I, I felt fine. And so it's not to say it was or wasn't a culprit or causing any of these issues, but it's something to be aware of, you know? So we, we were just sharing everything we knew. And one of the guys was like, oh, she's got ginger toxicity. Hey, listen, I, I eat ginger daily. Ginger's an anti-inflammatory. I've never ever heard of ginger toxicity. I didn't say anything. I wasn't in the space to even be able to talk much if I could help it. In fact, I was barely able to talk because of the way I felt. Um, other people, you know, oh, your liver's gonna, your liver's so angry at you and all this stuff. I'm like, my liver was completely fine. My pancreas was fine. All the tests that came back from my organs was fine. And in the end, you see, you can get so caught up in what people assume, they're coming up with stories. Don't buy into stories. You got to take deep breaths and just 
you know, just go inside and just know that you got to work with the people who are supposed to be professional, who are going to do the tests on you, who are going to have more information because you can get caught up in cray cray land when you allow other people's fears and judgments and ideas to creep in. You got to figure it out for yourself, just like anything. Life is about you living your experience and finding out the answers for you. And it's an internal job, but it's also sometimes it's a research. It's a, it's a tracking of your own body. It's a tracking of your mind, you know, meditation. If it weren't for my meditation, I could have been flipping out, but I, I remain calm for my daily practice. It allows me to stay centered and not get caught up in other people's fears because that is one of the things I've learned the most. There's a lot of fear in the external. And if you are caught up in stories that other people are creating or living or experiencing, then you lose sight of your truth of what is right here, right now for you. And that is, that just takes you out of your peace. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't allow that. You shouldn't allow that whatsoever. Um, so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the, st the staff here at Morton Plant. They've been exceptionally loving, generous, and just sweet and kind, funny, playful, uh, a joy to just, you know, and engage with. And they've been very considerate and, and just, just the, the best staff ever. I've had a couple friends stop by and bring me goodies. I've only, I'm only allowed to drink liquids, basically, clear liquids. Y'all, stay away from the hospital food. I don't know how you can justify clear liquids with corn syrup in it, but I ain't touching, you know, GMOs and, and stuff like that. And I don't do broths. Even if I did do broths, I don't trust them because I have to watch out for the gluten allergies, which I have a big old red allergy thing on here. So, oh, Tina, honey, I hope your peace isn't too disturbed. It really is about it. It is an inside job. Nobody can take you out of your peace if you can stay present in what you have and grateful for what, you're, what you do have. And it takes focusing on what's working and not what's not working. Because I've found that the more, the more we get caught up in what's not working, that takes us out of our peace. That's what give, we give our power to and it grows it more. The stuff we don't have control over, you just gotta surrender and let go. I know that's hard. That, that, that takes faith and trust, not just in yourself, but in the universe and the world around you that, remember, you're gonna be taken care of, but you have to allow that and not try to control it. The biggest thing that I'm finding is the more you try to control your external, the more you take yourself out of your peace. You have no control over your externals. Don't try to control other people. We all want somebody who's in control. We don't want them controlling us. Why do we try to do it to others? Control, it doesn't exist. We have no control over anything except for our reactions or responses to things. And that's important to, to note and try to stay mindful of. I love you too, Holly. Um, Mary, I'm not sure about the Jello. I didn't even want to chance it. I really didn't even want to chance it. I didn't want to change, ch chance anything, and so I was more comfortable with. Um, my girlfriend brought me watermelon juice yesterday. Another girlfriend brought me a Goliath green juice, and Tom was sweet. I'm sure you all saw his video. A little dirt don't hurt. Making the celery juice, I was grateful for that. In fact, I just finished that a little bit ago, and because I sipped on it. Um, because I think it's important to just keep it simple, keep it at least one ingredient. Um, I'm in the hospital because I, it turns out I had a perforated appendix and that sure as heck beats having to have your, you know, exploding appendix because a lot of people usually end up having an exploded appendix and it's an emergency and they're rushed to the hospital. I didn't get to that point. I caught it before that and I'm grateful because if it weren't for the dye that leaked out of the appendix when they did the contrast and I had that CAT scan last night, um, it could have been a whole lot worse. And I didn't, it didn't get to that point. And I'm really, oh, I'm so grateful. So there is always a div divine guidance and blessing that comes out of these situations and you just gotta trust. 
and know that you're going to be taken care of and everything's going to be okay. I'm, I'm kind of hoping I might need one more night here tonight. I'm here tonight for sure. And, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's poisonous. It's deadly. It's deadly if you end up with a, a ruptured appendix. And nobody wants to end up in that situation. Uh, so my arm is actually paining me right now. I just really wanted to come on and just let you all know where I'm at. Um, <laughs> as far as my dental situation, which is irony because I'm still trying to raise funds to be able to finish up my dental work. Um, I'm still working on it and I'm still in need, but as I'm just grateful that right now I'm under good care. There's a good staff taking care of me and I have great people in my life, in my community. I end up having to miss a whole lot in the past couple of days here now because I had a lot of different commitments and now I have to take it easy on myself. Um, unfortunately, I missed my beautiful girlfriend's 50th birthday party last night. We were surprising her. Today, I missed um, a sadhana that was special at the studio for Yogi Bhajan's birthday. I had to cancel my eye appointment at the VA that I was fortunate to get an early appointment for, so I'm going to have to reschedule that. Tomorrow, another sweet surprise birthday I'm going to miss. And then on Wednesday, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make the spa day with my goddesses, and I'm really needing that. But I do have um, belly holes, little slits. I have three little slits on my belly from the laparoscopy. I'd had a laparoscopic, laparoscopic like imaging years ago, but you know, and I don't feel horribly horrible. But I'm also on pain meds. I'm just going to say, which I will be taking a couple more here shortly. I mean they. I had morphine for the very first time in my life. I've never had morphine. That is like the last thing you would ever expect me to take. I've been in that much pain. I mean, it hurt to breathe. In fact, I tried to let it just subside and thought, well, maybe I'll be okay if I don't have it. Soon as I did that, it happened yesterday, I was laying in the bed and I started sweating profusely. I was in such pain that my body started heating up and when they took my temperature it was 102.5 or something. It had jumped four degrees because my resting, you know, my normal temperature is around 98 something, 98.5. And, and I was still cold. It was cold in the room. I mean, it, gets, it was 62. The, the, <laughs> the temperature on the AC thermostat was 62 degrees. So they were kind enough to increase the temperature for me because I also have Raynos, so I get cold very easily. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you. So um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be on the mend for a little bit. I don't know how long. I don't know how long these things take to heal. <sighs> oh, but being a, allergic to the 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 contrast material required me to take Ben Benadryl. They, and they did this by IV, by the way, too. So it goes straight into your system. And I didn't realize how quickly Benadryl makes you drowsy. So they gave me Benadryl, some steroid, and something else. I forgot what the third thing was. It was from nausea that I, that I do know. And then um, I had to drink down two, I'd say they were two 16 ounces of diluted with water contrast material. Didn't taste the bad, as bad as I thought it would. But the end result was, blah, you know, it was a lot in my belly. And the first time not taking kind of, kind of stinks because I had to do it a second time. So there's another, you know, okay, I had to do it twice. But if they hadn't have done it that third time, they might not have caught my appendix. And that was huge, to, especially because it was tucked up underneath my large intestine. That's crazy. Who the, how the heck did that happen? I have no idea. And if, if that dye didn't make it down there, then they wouldn't have seen the leakage of the dye in my body that showed there was a perforation, there was a hole. That's crazy. Crazy, crazy. So, yeah. Oh, I'm just grateful I got here. I'm grateful to be alive, and I am, I'm just going to continue to live and thrive because that's the best I can do. And I encourage each and every one of you out there, if you ever get in this situation, don't take it lightly. 
you know, trying to push through the pain. And I know a lot of ladies out there, we have high tolerances for pain. You know, that's why we birth babies. Don't do it. Don't take a chance on your life because you matter. Each and every one of you matter. Okay. So I love you all very, very much. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. If you are able to donate to my fundraiser, I mean, I'm fortunate this is covered by the VA 100%. Oh, thank God, because of the new, you know, everything, new Medicaid, uh, medi medical coverage. But truly, I could still use the help to get my teeth taken care of. So thank you. I love you. Get sweet dreams. And remember to tell those you love how much you love them. And uh, do the best you can do. I mean, you be you. I love you very much. Sweet dreams. <laughs>